Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we got on Buddy Jaffe. No random jet, way more smoother than a plane, yeah. Way more quicker than a vet, yeah. Teach y'all to flex like a train, yeah. Got a bitch out of my cat, yeah. Took out of school for the brain, yeah. She came around with the set, yeah. Now really ain't no saying, yeah. Taking a round on deck, set, check, off, X, tech, mix, stress, this, I, live, cat, list, stat, this, at, list. I put up global, I get booked, don't write books, says Barnes and Noble, top two total. Grade school basketball legend, Marquette high school basketball player, two-time team captain, went to the Final Four as junior year of state and won sectional every year. Uh, former Marquette basketball player, buddy, welcome to the show. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, really awesome to get the chance to come on here, and yeah, excited to get into it. For sure. So uh, I'm just gonna ask you about your high school career. So obviously Marquette, uh, when you were there, was really good at basketball. So what was your experience like making the final Final Four, getting really close to state, and Pretty much like, like bring Marquette basketball back while you're there. Yeah, so coming into Marquette High School, like as a freshman, there wasn't really a basketball culture. There was just starting to be because of the new coach, Donovan Garlitz. Yeah. So there was much more of a focus on basketball and being successful when I got there. And then by my junior year, that was even like intensified. And we, it was kind of ran like a college program in many ways, but so junior year, you know, it was kind of unorthodox. We weren't really supposed to go that far. There was a lot of things that lined up in order for us to make a run. And we had kind of a Cinderella story in the tournament. We pulled off some crazy upsets and comebacks. And it was awesome to be able to go to the Final Four, especially in a state like Indiana, because yeah. high school basketball is so important to the people of Indiana. And so going to the semifinals and playing in front of like 5,000, 6,000 fans was really cool. Yeah, that was definitely – I remember when that was going on, uh, everyone went down to – or was it being played? Lafayette, right? Yes, that was at Lafayette. Yeah, right by Purdue, I remember that. That was pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, Rob, you got one? Yeah, well, um, my, my older brother just graduated from Marquette, and um, one of my best friends is at Marquette now, um, and I got a lot, of, a lot of other relatives up at Marquette. So uh, I've been in Milwaukee. I love the area, but uh, I wanted to know, what's your favorite place to eat on campus? Favorite place to eat on campus is probably Sobelman's. Love it. Yeah, a nice little, nice little burger spot for all the students. I, I would have said the same thing. So <laughs> love that. Yeah. So I, uh, I visited. I think I saw you. Remember? Coming yeah. Up the game. Uh, so I thought Milwaukee was great. I've only been there once before, but it's a great town. So what's your favorite thing to do around in Milwaukee? Favorite thing to do in Milwaukee? Yeah. So Milwaukee is awesome. The way I always describe it is it's just a smaller Chicago. Yeah, that's what I yeah. thought too. Yeah, because it has all the perks of a big city, but it's not as loud and not as crowded as Chicago is. So my favorite thing to do is probably just to go by the lakefront and just walk around there or go to Bradford Beach. That's a really good spot. And just there's just a lot of things to do within the city, whether you're going to a sports event or a concert or anything. Summerfest is always really fun and just stuff like that. Just being in that type of city atmosphere is awesome. Yeah, Milwaukee's a great town, great college town, too. Definitely. I thought yeah. it was awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, so like you just mentioned, uh, one of the things to do is Summerfest. One of my questions was, have you been to Summerfest and um, what was the experience there? Yeah, so I have actually been to Summerfest. I went a couple of years ago um, with some friends, and it's really fun. You know, it's I had never been to Lollapalooza, so I didn't really know what to expect from a music festival, but it was a lot of fun. I've heard it's definitely a lot more relaxed and chilled than Lollapalooza. Yeah, yeah. That's what, that's what Smash, we yeah. yeah, definitely. But the walk is Lollapalooza for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so now I'm going to kind of get in. So what was your uh, experience being on Marquette's basketball team, like the – for the one year you're on the team, like, because, you know, that's huge being on a high skill D1 team. Yes, you know, it really wasn't like anything that I expected and it wasn't um, anything I could have ever dreamed of. You know, it was a dream come true to go to a Division One school and play in a conference like the Big East. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. And you really get to see kind of how much goes into, like, what goes on really at a D1 program. And you understand, because you watch on TV and you see – how good everyone is, but you don't really have an appreciation for that until you're there. And then, so just being there and being around all these guys that work so hard and are so talented and just the kind of community of winning, I guess I would say, because that's all that everyone was really focused on. It was really cool because it was almost like a business. Like everyone came in, did their work, did what was expected of them. And then 
like there was results. So it was really cool. Um, it was definitely an experience that I'll take with me for the rest of my life. Yeah, that, that was sweet. I remember seeing you on, uh, on the bench on camera part of the hype squad. That was awesome. Yeah. Like, That's funny. <laughs> yeah, that was sweet. Yeah, that was, that was also really cool. Like having friends from home, be able to like send you pictures and stuff. TV. That, yeah, that was, that was, that was definitely cool. That yeah, was really cool. The, uh, the amount of times that I would watch a game with Emmett and he'd be like, see, see right there, there's, there's buddy right there. I'd be, like, right. I'd be like, all right, Emmett, like, I see him, like, I get it. Uh, and then uh, another question for me, what, what made you want to go to Marquette? What, was the, what drew you in? Yeah, so first and foremost, my sister, one of my older sisters went to Marquette. So I had been around and visited and I just, I loved Milwaukee, loved the school. So if basketball wasn't involved, Marquette was going to be my first choice. And then um, I had a bunch of D2 and D3 offers going into my senior year. And I was really thinking about doing that, but it was always my dream to play D1. So I reached out to Marquette at the beginning of my senior year just to see if they had any walk-on spots or anything like that available. And I actually got to go work out with the team during my senior year of high school. Um, and everything worked out and they gave me the walk-on spot. And so I figured like, it's my dream school. It's the Big East basketball. Like, I can't say no to that. So yeah, right. perfect opportunity. Yeah, I remember when you posted the picture, you and Wojo, and I was like, oh, my God, that's so <laughs> sweet. Uh, so obviously, like, what was your time commitment? Because I, I know, like, you had games on weekdays. Because I remember you guys went to DePaul on, like, a Wednesday night and played DePaul at right. home. And uh, I, I know you had a lot of people visit. But what was it like? Because that's, that's tough, balancing all schoolwork and everything, mm -hmm. traveling. So that's, yeah, I would say the time commitment is probably the hardest thing to prepare for when being a college athlete, just because yeah. you don't really understand how demanding it is. But it's, it's basically like having two full-time jobs because you're a student and you're an athlete and you have to do both of them full-time. So before or in the preseason, you're not traveling as much. So you're able to go to all your classes and be on campus. So that's more like classes in the morning and then practice from like 2 to 6.30 or 7, then you're done. And then when the season picks up and you start playing games and traveling, it's more like you're traveling two days during the week, usually yeah. home games on weekends or home game during the week and traveling on weekends. So the time commitment's tough because you have to learn how to like manage your schoolwork, manage your body, keep your mind right. Like everything, there's a lot that goes into it. And it's definitely, it's definitely a professional job, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. That's ridiculous. You, you don't see that. You just see, you just see the games. You don't, Right. know about the practice times how it's balancing practice with classes and everything mm -hmm. that was definitely tough um but do you, i know like uh i've talked to johnny roder about this like how was the gear i already got a lot of free gear and everything which is pretty sweet mm -hmm. yeah. johnny was telling me all about it yeah you know that was that was a very really cool part about being at marquette because marquette's sponsored by jordan so yeah. just with that alone you get a lot of cool gear i mean everyone wants jordan shoes so yeah, right. That was really cool. And we got a bunch of free pairs, like in the 20s, probably, of free pairs of shoes. I got free sweatpants, sweatshirts. All the gear was really cool. And it's most of what I wear today. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's the same thing with my, my D3 gear for lacrosse. I just wear it all the time. But yeah, exactly. uh, anyway, um, now, uh, I know that you, you had a good relationship with uh, the Housers. Um, is there, like – do you think that there's any uh, main reason why they decided to vote one of them go to Virginia and one go to Michigan State? Yeah, so um, when they left, that was the thing that was the most surprising to me was that they split up because they were so, like, serious and strong about staying together. But at that time, based on the schools that they were looking at, they didn't have two um, scholarship positions for both of them at most of the schools that they wanted. Okay. So that was a big reason they ended up splitting up. And if you like, if you look at both of their individual games, I think that they picked the right schools for their play styles. Yeah. So it definitely makes sense why jo Joey went to Michigan State and Sam went to Virginia. Um, it was unfortunate that they had to split up, but yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so uh, what was my question here? Um, Oh yeah. So, uh, what do you still continue your relationships with people on the team? Like, do you still talk to everyone? Yeah. So I still talk to most of the guys on a daily basis. That's pretty cool. Um, I didn't get to see them as much just cause the schedule yeah, yeah. was so tough, but, yeah. um, whenever they were free on weekends or anything, we would hang out and 
So I still have a pretty good relationship with the guys, which is what I was most worried about was losing the relationship with them. But so I'm glad I still have that. Yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. You never know what could happen when you don't see them every day. But that's cool that you guys have been able to keep in touch. Yeah, it's awesome. They're all really good guys. So that's been nice. Yeah, um, it seems like the whole whole team up there is, is really like a family. And you guys got a nice bond up there. But um, I know that there's been a lot of uh, speculation um, with the team. You know, it's been it's been tough. This year was kind of tough. Um, and people are looking um, looking to blame someone for the issues of the team. Now, I, I personally, I think that I don't, I'm not a bit the biggest fan of Wojo uh, as a coach. Uh, I wanted to know if you thought anything of Wojo, um, if he's a good coach in, in practice but not in a game that, like, we can't see or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. Um, I do think Wojo is a really good coach. You know, I learned more about basketball in the year that I was with him than any other year I've played. Mm -hmm. um, he's a great defensive-minded coach, the best defensive-minded coach I've ever been around. Yeah, I'd imagine um, that. Knows how to set up a defense. I do think he kind of struggles in game situations to make adjustments. I think that was shown a lot this year, kind of in late game situations when we didn't foul or we fouled when we shouldn't have. Like, there were a lot of situations like that, and that's where I think he could improve is his decision-making late games, whether it's offensive or situational stuff. Um, so yeah, I would say that's my take on that. I think just late yeah. game adjustments and things. Yeah, that's, that's definitely that's definitely probably a great. I I've I've always liked Wojo from the sidelines. I don't know. I think he should stick around. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a tough year. Uh, yeah. They're up and down. Um, but I think that's it uh, for the questions. All Thanks right. for coming on, man. Yeah, no, thank you guys so much for having me. Really, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe.